All right, this is my review of the Bluetti AC200P. So I'm gonna start by just showing how it's uh, delivered so that it's really clear how well it's protected. We have these uh, really heavy cardboard edges so that the box won't collapse. It's around all of the, um, all of the different corners and uh, it's all tied up so it doesn't come apart. Let me fix that. All right, I've gone ahead and uh, weakened the tape and the, the, different, um, the different ribbons holding everything together. And I took off those major uh, external supports and there's another box inside. There's the sticker for the AC200P on the internal box. Looks like they ship a lot of different things in this okay, box. Okay, I've weakened the internal tape for the internal box, and I'm pulling this up. And inside the second layer box is a set of peripherals. So the standard peripherals that come with an AC200P looks like they're all in this nice carrying bag. And what I see are this connector, which is for the photovoltaic or um, car uh, adapter port. It's a dual use port. Uh, this connector for use in the car. So that, I'll show you how these fit together in a second. Uh, this connector for photo photovoltaic. And then as you can see, they all have these little yellow connectors on them. And that's how you um, connect the photovoltaic or the car adapter to the input on the, uh, the the photovoltaic slash car input on the AC200P. There's a separate input on the AC200P that handles the power supply, so I'll show you that. There's a two-year warranty for the AC200P. That's pretty good, and even though it's not a three-year warranty like some of the crowdsourcing backers got on the AC200, it's probably not gonna need a three-year warranty because it has a thousand charges extra as a lithium ion phosphate uh, battery inside the AC200. So it's probably doesn't need a three year warranty and it'll probably uh, last longer than the, than the original AC200 anyway. Here is that, here's that other connector that I was mentioning. So the power brick goes into a different port than the auto or the photovoltaic. So you can charge two at once if you get two power bricks or if you charge from solar and a power brick at the same time. So this is the power brick, and this thing can push about 400 watts into the AC200P. Here's more packaging material for all you folks who love unboxing videos, but honestly, that's not the point of this video, as you'll see when I get to some of the fun use cases. And I mean, that is some pretty major, may, I mean, I have big hands and uh, that's a very major piece of foam. There's another one on the bottom as well and a nice plastic cover on the AC200P so that it doesn't get all dusty or wet during uh, shipment from China. I know how long these take to get here, so it's good that they've kept it covered up. So as we can see, this is the bottom of the box. There's no other materials down there. Uh, I don't know if it shows in the video, but I can see with my eyes, there's just nothing else down there. I guess I should double check, but really. Yeah, there's just nothing else down there. So now I'm going to weigh the AC200P. Okay, I am weighing the AC200P, and that is 61.1 pounds. How does it feel to be probably 10 pounds heavier than the AC200? That's due to the lithium iron phosphate battery in the device, which stores an extra 300 watts of power, has a more solid chemical composition, is less likely to... Uh, burst into flames if there's some kind of electrical problem. And frankly, uh, it's just a, uh, it's a cooler charging, cooler, um, cooler power making uh, chemical composition. And uh, with the higher capacity and the, the safer, um, safer chemical composition, uh, I think it's just, it's fine. It weighs 10 pounds more than its predecessor with a lighter battery. Okay, so we've got the AC200P in place of the box that it came in. And let's do a quick uh, overview of the different 
controls. That's a power button and that will light up once it's powered up. That's the uh, continuous wattage that it can provide, 2000 watts, and it has 2000 watt hours. So I guess it could supply 2000 watts for a whole hour. Or if you use a lot less than 2000 watts, then it's gonna last several hours or maybe several days. There's a DC output, 12 volts, 10 amps. That's a standard, that's a standard car plug. So you just, uh, you could charge things or power things that normally would plug into your car from here. And it has a, a, heavier, a heavier output. It's called a DC output, 12 volts, 25 amps. That's a very special plug. And uh, it could be used to like power a camper, or some you know ham radio or something that really wants to suck down a lot more DC wattage without having to go through the uh, AC inverter. It's got these two little plugs here. My understanding is that these are useful for powering like a um, if you have if you have a direct DC power adapter for like a sleep apnea device or other medical devices, you could plug them straight into the 12 volt 3 amp, and you'd need the right connectors. Uh, then there's the standard USB-C, 60 watts. There's standard, you know, good old USB, uh, you know, I don't know, what is it called? USB uh, 2.0 connectors. They're not for data, they're just power, but five volts, three amps, that's a pretty heavy uh, USB power supply and can charge phones and iPads and all kinds of things on their older connectors until you finally move to USB-C which will be coming pretty soon for all, everybody running MacBooks and things. This is your six port, 120 volt, actually 110 to 120. So it's fine for like Japanese or other, other voltages with the same plug style between 100 to 120 volts, six of them. They have that funky uh, side slash through one of the one of the connectors, so that means they can handle at least 15 amps. You wouldn't want to load all of them with 15 amps, but you could load one of them with 15 amps. And as long as you're not overloading the whole thing above 2000 watts, it should be fine to power basically anything that would have been plugged into your wall at home. On the top of the device, we have two wireless charging circles. They're the standard Qi chargers. So if you've got, you know, standard Samsung or iPhone hardware that can use Qi, then you can just lay them on top of that thing to charge. Now we have down here inputs. One input is for photovoltaic and car. You should set the proper settings in the configuration on the device so that you don't blow out any circuit breakers on your car. The other input is for your AC adapter. And again, they can both be used at the same time. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and power this on right now. So as you can see, there's a, there's a screen here, it's kind of reflective, but honestly, once we power it on, those reflections should fade into the background. So it's gonna take a few seconds to boot up. This is the Blue Eddy uh, launch screen, and as you can see, uh, it's got a 54% power in it when it comes from the factory. That's a good state to be in because it prevents having a memory effect on the battery during shipping. So it's gonna hold that charge really well and then you can go ahead and fill it up as soon as you get home. Let's go ahead and do that. So here's the wall charger for the AC200P. I've got it connected into a US uh, wall here. And there's the cable, it goes to the power supply. The power supply has a red dot because it's charging. Normally I would think red means it's not, but actually it's green when it's not charging. And then it goes red when it's actually charging. So it's plugged into the input for the AC adapter. And the input for the AC adapter is bringing in 393 watts right now. And this is actually one hour after the original uh, images I took um, showing the 54% charge. So one hour, it went from 54% to 72%. Okay, so now to show something a little different. Um, this is a special accessory that I've purchased in order to use two AC adapters 
at the same time. So there's the yellow connector cables. There is the cable that I use to plug into the AC200P. I've plugged another cable into the wall. And as you can see, it's green because it's got power, but it's not charging the AC200. I have two AC adapter bricks now. And with this special cable, that adapts from the second AC adapter to the solar and car charge port. I can go ahead and put that in right alongside the main, the main plug. Let's see, I gotta make sure I connect this right. I just plug it in like it's solar. And now this is freaking out on me. Let's see what it's doing. It's beeping. Hmm. So I figured out why it's beeping. The reason is I plugged in the 400 watt uh, AC power brick into the wall and into the AC, into the AC 200P. And uh, that kind of wattage uh, is rejected because this is set to car input because it doesn't want to suck down that kind of uh, wattage and like blow a circuit breaker on your car, blow a fuse on your car. So I need to change this to photovoltaic. And the screen is not super responsive. All right, I've set it to photovoltaic and I'm gonna unplug and replug the AC200P. Let's see if I need to do anything else. Yeah, it's not just jumping straight in. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug and replug. Hopefully I don't need to go into some special settings and reset the port. I don't know, we'll see. Yeah, good news. So it looks like uh, both power supplies are working now and uh, it's trying them out, I guess, to see what it can draw from both. It's really jumping around. Uh, it's kind of, it's surprising how much it's jumping around. Right now it's five, then it's 400, then it's five again. Let's see if that settles out. So I got to the bottom of what was uh, going on with the dual power supply charging issues. Uh, like I said, it was really jumping around. Uh, the solar port kept flipping back and forth between around 400 watts and then down to like five, 10, 11 watts and back up to 400 watts and that continued for about a minute. I went ahead and just unplugged all the power input sources and then powered down the AC200P and then plugged in the solar source first. Now the solar input will cause the AC to turn, the AC200P to turn on by itself. And so it did and started pulling down 400 watts through the solar port on the AC adapter. Then I plugged in the original AC adapter into its normal AC adapter port, and now that's pulling down 400 watts as well. So together, they're pulling down about 800 watts, and they're charging this up pretty quickly. Uh, I don't know if you recall, but a few minutes ago, we noticed it was, uh, you know, it had gone uh, to like 74%, something like that. So it's already gained um, some, some power just in the few minutes that I've been playing with the dual adapter support. Uh, let's see what so else. the AC 200 P uh, it handles uh, a lot of different air conditions without having to like replace circuit breakers or deal with melted cables or other weirdness it uh, it goes into a fault mode whenever you've plugged the wrong power into the wrong thing and gone over the limits that um, that are built into the device it's a very smart device um, but uh, the most important things to know about the settings are that you can change the clock in here. Um, you can review uh, the, the power levels of um, all the different inputs and outputs and the battery and so on. Uh, you can check the fault history and it's important to have the date and time set right so you know when something happened so that you know what you did and how you could fix it. So I'm gonna go ahead and, I mean, I'm not gonna go over the, all the, um, the, the, the user interface of this, but again, really simply put, what you should expect to see is um, what's the wattage coming in from the, the solar or car port, or if you've got an AC adapter plugged into that port with its with specialized cables, what's coming in from that? And then what's coming in from the standard AC adapter port? And then what's going out to, um, to AC and to DC? So uh, 
one thing that's really important to understand about these settings is making sure that uh, if you need to charge something from the AC200P, if it's connected to a DC port or to the, um, if it's sitting on top of the device charging through the Qi wireless chargers, you need to turn on the DC power. So that's, that's shown here, DC power. Um, basically, I'm gonna try to turn that on. All right, DC is on. And then um, I'll turn on AC power and I'll say, yeah, on. So what's interesting is these right now show zero watts because I've got nothing plugged into it. Uh, realistically, there is a light drain that's related to the power inverters that provide the different voltages and the different AC and DC um, you know, power configuration. So um, there's a slight drain going on when these are on. I'm gonna leave them off and let them finish charging up because um, the first demo I wanna do for this is actually going to involve some solar panels and charging my car. Uh, so I want this to be at a full charge when I start and get as much as I can out of it uh, before we go in under the sun. And boom, twice as fast as one charger. Two chargers wrap this up pretty quickly, got it to 100%. This is a Blue Eddy uh, AC200P uh, solar panel. It's, it's um, the actual model number I think is called SP120, but it's a solar panel designed to work with the AC200 or the AC200P. Probably works with a lot of other um, devices as well. Uh, they can uh, be shipped in packages of one like this, or they could be shipped in packages of four. They have some very basic information on the back about technical details about the solar panel. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and unbox this and show you what they look like. I've got uh, eight of them. I might even be able to borrow two from a friend to see how fast we can charge up my car. The solar panels come inside that box and they've, they're well sealed for the trip uh, from China. They've got uh, good corner padding so you don't find them wrecked when they arrive uh, at your home or apartment. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and open this up, see what's inside. Well, packaging is packaging. They come with a little user's guide, model SP120 user's guide. They basically show how to connect it up and it's a well-built panel. Um, it's got a nice nylon, uh, nylon covering. Uh, it's got a little uh, kickstand and then a little bag where the cables go. And I'll show more about how to set this up when we prepare to charge my car in a few minutes. Now, this is really hard to see, but uh, just to be really clear what we're looking at, the uh, AC200P currently has 6%, oh, sorry, 5% remaining because it's been on a very heavy load, doing a really important job. You see this, uh, this is called a grounding plug. And what it does is when you plug it into the AC200P, it tricks the uh, any other devices connected to the HC200P into thinking that they're that they're grounded, and I've got a pretty major cable connected here, which when I run it to my car, I'm actually able to connect it to my car charger, and I've been charging my car for more than an hour now, directly from the HC200P, and uh, the entire HC200P is being unloaded into my car. And as you can see, my car is charging. It is working on it. And it's only about a quarter charged, but um, it's almost depleted the AC200P. And just a moment ago, I have gone ahead and set up uh, eight solar panels here, plus uh, two others um, borrowed. So I've got 10 solar panels, all connected to my AC200P. So here's the uh, solar charging port, and that's uh, set to PV mode. If I didn't set it to PV, I'd, I'd get an air condition because the voltage is so high. Now, what is, what is a high voltage? Well, I've got I've got two sets of solar panels in series, five solar panels per series, and then the two groups of five are connected to each other in parallel. Unfortunately, it's a very cloudy day. So, I mean, you know, this is really terribly cloudy for California. I, ch I chose the wrong day to do this, 
But um, simply put, each of the two series of solar panels within the series, you have to connect black to red throughout the series. So the one group of solar panels is connected all to each other, black to red, black to red, all the way across. And then also this other set of solar panels is connected black to red, all the way down. And what that's doing is it's increasing the voltage um, additively. So instead of 20 volts each um, on its own, it's 20 plus 20 plus 20 plus 20. It's 100 volts and still just six amps. And then we've got another set of 100 volts, six amps. And what I've done is after the red and black connections are done making the series, the, uh, what you do is you get a red connector from each series, plug it into a splitter, and then you go, that's creating a parallel connection. So the two groups of panels are now wired in parallel with the splitters. And what that does is instead of increasing the voltage, it increases the amperage. So I've got a, a red splitter and I've got a black splitter. And I also have a big bumblebee over there. Hope he likes me. Uh, so here's my black splitter. And uh, again, I've got the black inputs from each series going into the splitter to create a parallel connection. Now, parallel connections do not increase the voltage. So there's still 100 volts, but they have additive amperage. So the six amps from one group of five gets added to the six amps from the other group of five. They come down over here. They go to my, they go to my Blue Eddy adapter that came with the device. That's the standard MP4 connectors, and they're going into the uh, into the PV port. And I've got the device set to PV mode so that it doesn't uh, go into air conditions for the uh, for that voltage and that amperage. If it thought this was a car, it wouldn't like what's coming in off the solar panels. So this is a crappy day. I was hoping to get 700 watts. Like, you know, what does it take to max this out, right? I think what it takes is a sunny day. So unfortunately today, even with 10 solar panels connected on a very cloudy day, as you saw, it's 220 watts. And uh, boy, this thing has 3% left. It's trying to, trying to squeeze that 200 watts into my car with whatever's left in the battery, it's gonna go down real soon and gonna be done. And I'll take a, a video and see what my car says. My car previously had zero electric miles available on it. So I'm gonna see if it has, I'd like to see seven, we'll see. Anyhow, um, next clip. All right, so I just turned on the car and it looks like I've got about four miles out of the AC 200P. It added, the original range is 209 gas miles and it shows four electric miles added to the car. So that's all from the AC 200P. Uh, the AC 200P, I did set up some solar panels but I was only getting about 200 watts because it's a really terrible cloudy day. Uh, if I had been getting 700 watts while I was discharging that AC 200P, um, basically I could have refilled the AC 200P a total, like it, it, it could have provided three full charges during the day. So I would say I could have probably gotten 12 miles out of it. Uh, if I was doing this all day on a very good sunny day with those solar panels I set up. But for today, I got four miles out of it, discharging the AC 200P and spending about an hour on just 200 to 250 Watts from the solar panels. So just getting a new shot of the generator neutral ground bonding plug. So you have a good idea of the name, search guard, a model 44400. And uh, basically this is what you need if you want to charge your car from the AC200P because your car charger is trying to detect whether there's a ground circuit protection. Um, I can't say whether uh, it's safe to uh, defeat the ground, but uh, it certainly allows the car charger to um, draw power from the AC200P and put it into your electric vehicle. So that's the, um, that's the bonding plug.
So I've got my Blue Eddy AC200 hooked up to my entertainment system. It's powering a PC with a lot of peripherals attached. It's got, uh, uh, it's got a PlayStation. It's got an LG Blu-ray DVD player connected. It's got an Nvidia Shield connected. It's got a uh, sound bar and a subwoofer connected. And of course the TV is running. It also has uh, some PS4 controllers charging and it has a couple of Nvidia Shield controllers charging and it has a uh, handheld ham radio charging, it has some AirPods charging, and it has an iPhone charging and currently drawing just under 500 watts. It's at 82%. It's been going for about a half hour and uh, doing great. So just really quick kind of rolling through the different um, systems that are going. As you can see, I've got a PC connected. I've got my soundbar connected. It's going from HDMI 2 to my NVIDIA Shield. I've got my PlayStation connected and uh, should be running. It takes a while to sync up through the soundbar, I guess, but there's my PlayStation. All this is powered through the Blue Eddy. Got my NVIDIA Shield and my Amazon Fire TV Cube. All of them powered through the Blue Eddy. The entire en entertainment center powered through this. Going at about 500 watts. Obviously that exceeds the, uh, the AC adapter input into the Blue Eddy, but this thing has only come down to about 80% in about a half hour. So I could use this for several hours before, with everything turned on, before this thing needs to charge. And if I had this charging while I'm using it, I'm sure it would last twice as long. And I don't actually use everything at the same time. So certainly no trouble running all these. I'll probably move my cable modem and my wireless router to someplace next to the TV so they can all be back on backup power. And uh, I'll generally, charge up the UPS, char I'm sorry, charge up the Blue Eddy and uh, run things off there only when, uh, only when there's a power outage. Otherwise, I'll just leave them plugged into the wall. Anyhow, just wanted to share that and uh, yeah, show how everything's working. Next on the list, I've gone ahead and I've recharged the Blue Eddy and I've got it ready to do a little bit of cooking. So first thing, we're gonna try a 600 watt microwave oven from Commercial Chef. It's called the microwave oven with rotary controls. It's a, uh, it's rated as 600 watts, but I think it consumes a lot more than that. We're gonna see. And I'm gonna start by throwing some ramen in there for about, I'm gonna say five minutes. I have a much better microwave oven, but I wanna see how it goes with kind of a lower power device. And I got this for the purposes of camping and travel so that I can I can go ahead and just throw things in a microwave and cook them. And I like this because it doesn't have a digital clock to reset and you can set it to high power without pushing any buttons. So we're gonna give it a shot. Oh, almost forgot. Don't forget to put on your AC power. And turning that on. Now we can go ahead and try this. So here we go. I'm setting that for five minutes, almost six, and we're gonna let that cook through. Now we're coming up on about 30 seconds left. So uh, I don't know if you can see in there. I know that I can't, um, we'll see at the end. Uh, this is taking about 1,100 watts. Uh, I've seen it go to like 1,120 watts. Um, and it's taking about 1% uh, per minute. Um, we're, we were just a little over five minutes, not much. Uh, but basically, uh, if, you, if you think your 600 watt microwave is only gonna consume 600 watts, it's not. All right, let's take a look and see if that was boiling. There's a lot of steam coming off this, and let's see whether this is, uh, gosh, it sure is hot. Okay, so I've got some 
chopsticks. I'll just use one here. Yeah, I mean, this is perfectly soft and I did actually notice it was bubbling a little bit as I took, as I opened the door. Um, so this was boiling. Um, I think we should try this with a uh, higher wattage microwave because I know the AC200 can handle it. And I've got a microwave that can dish up like 1200 watts, twice as much power. So let's see whether it draws a lot more from the AC200 or whether it's actually still gonna just draw 1200 watts or so and cook my ramen twice as fast. Okay, this time around, we're gonna try a higher end microwave oven. It's not a little 600 watt model that sucks down uh, 1100 watts. It's a Panasonic NN SN736B. I believe that's 1200 watts. I've got a new, a new set of noodles here, uh, same volume of water. So that's the main factor in uh, how long it should take to heat. And I've set it for five minutes this time. Same thing, uh, just no rotary control. Sorry that it's dirty. That's my real kitchen microwave. So we're still at 94% and we are clicking start here. And we're gonna see what wattage is taken from this higher end microwave. Ooh, it's uh, 2000 watts. That's really the max. Um, hopefully it can make it the whole five minutes without uh, freaking out. But um, this microwave does take twice as much power to provide twice as much energy into the food. So we're gonna give it another couple minutes. I would say this five minutes should uh, consume twice as much power as the other microwave. So I finished cooking the noodles in the Panasonic microwave uh, twice as fast, but I left it on for five minutes. So the noodles actually got quite uh, quite well done and my phone fell asleep. So it originally finished at 83% and it consumed twice as much power as the 600 watt microwave. So um, might as well use the 600 while you're traveling. It's a lot smaller, lighter, lower power, uh, easier to manage your energy use. And uh, as it turns out, while I have been waiting for my phone to charge, as you can see, the uh, AC circuit is still drawing 47 watts, just having the microwave plugged in. I think some of that is for the microwave circuitry, but some of it is actually the inverter on the AC200. So there is a constant drain if you don't go out of your way to turn things off. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and make some waffles. We're at 82%, and I've got a waffle maker connected here and some batter. And I have not yet heated the waffle maker, so let's see how much energy does it take to heat up the waffle maker. This is going to use the AC alternator, and I've turned it on, and the waffle maker is warming up. The red light means it's trying to heat up and it's pulling about 1,100 watts, which isn't bad. It's gonna take about five minutes to warm up. I'm gonna turn the camera back on as soon as that happens. So the light just went off. The waffle maker is preheated and we got from 83% down to 79%. So it took about 1% per minute for about four minutes to get the waffle maker uh, heat it up. So I'm going to prepare it here. I've got this Presto flip side waffle maker and I've got some batter that I'm going to pour in. They say add about a cup. So I'm going to eyeball it here. I think that's about a cup. And then I'm going to close it and flip it over and the light is still off. I'm gonna set the timer for three minutes and see how that goes. Now while the light is off, we're getting basically no draw, but the light just turned back on because the batter is cooling it down. So we're at 79%. We're gonna lose about 1% per minute while this is cooking the waffle and then uh, We'll measure again when it's done with the first waffle. I think I can probably get two out of this. So we'll try two and see if the second one consumes less. 
Okay, the first waffle's up, it's 77%. So this thing is only on about half the time that you have it, uh, that you have it plugged in. And that waffle looks like it's in great shape. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of peel that off. And uh, I mean, you can see the steam coming off that, so I won't waste your time buttering it and eating it. But this is a uh, 77%. Let's throw another one on. Well, this is a really handy waffle maker, by the way. It's well rated. It's uh, safe because of the handles and it's uh, easy to use. Oops, except when you only use one hand. And I'm gonna let it, I'm gonna let it go ahead and drip out here. I think that's been about a cup. We're gonna close that up, flip it. Set the timer for three minutes and it's back on. It's still at 77%, just getting back to 1,100 watts. And we'll give this one another couple minutes. Okay, second waffle is up. It only dropped one or 2%. And again, it's because the waffle maker's on only about half the time that, uh, that you have it plugged in. So here's the next waffle. I think it'd be really fun to have a waffle maker on a camping trip. And that's part of why I got the Blue Eddy. So, see, we got some butter, got some waffles. It's working great. All right, next up. Now for the toaster. I've got a toaster connected here. It's just a plain old toaster you'd have in your kitchen. And uh, I'm not even sure what it's set to because it has a little LED panel to show the power. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the AC inverter so that the toaster will show its power level. And since my bread is kind of cold, and since I really wanna demonstrate that it can toast, I'm gonna go ahead and set it to six, pop these in and put the toaster down and see how it does. So a lot like the waffle maker, it's only pulling down about a thousand watts. And for those of you who know about toasters, you know that this is more of a timer than anything else. So uh, we'll let it run its full time and then see how it's doing on the power. I figure at less than a thousand watts, it's gonna take less than 1% per minute. So we'll see what this looks like once the toast comes back up. As we can see, the toaster is doing great. The toast is basically done. I'm gonna go ahead and force it up. We got to 73%. So here it comes. Perfect. Oops, that's hot. Trying the other hand. And that's still hot. Perfect. And not consuming any more power because the toast is up. So that was about a thousand watts for about three minutes. So it's at 73% now. Next up here is the uh, coffee grinder. I'm gonna grind a little bit of coffee. Got some coffee in here and uh, just put it down flat, push the button. I'm gonna put a little bit of this in the uh, coffee maker. Okay, a little more I think. As you can see, I've got it filled up to the five cup limit. Gonna go ahead and plug that in. And that is on. Coffee maker is pulling 660 watts. That's very light. It's 1822. Let's see how long it takes to brew five cups of coffee. Getting to the end here with the coffee. 
We boiled up five cups. Coffee maker's starting to burp a little. Getting at 68%, 660 watts, like before, to brew five cups of coffee. So I'm testing a DC outlet a little bit. I've got a 12 volt, 10 amp cable running to a portable fridge. It's been on a few minutes. It started at about 66. Now it's down to 46 and it's charging the, uh, the lithium ion battery in this fridge while it cools the fridge. I've got my own phone plugged in because I've been running out of power. I've got another cable going to a uh, solar portable battery. And then I've got my AirPods uh, charging wirelessly on the pad above. While the fridge here is cooling down, I'm gonna run grab an extension cord and see how much wattage it takes to power my fridge. Right now, uh, all of the DC devices together, a phone, um, a battery pack that takes about the same draw as a phone, a portable fridge, and some AirPods, it's a total of about 70 watts. Well, to wrap things up here, we've got about 50 watts being pulled by the fridge, plus the phone, plus the power brick, plus the AirPods. The fridge is uh, sub-zero and uh, it's charging a lithium ion battery to keep itself running even after it's unplugged. Uh, but it's also running the compressor and uh, it stays below zero. When it gets to negative four, the wattage actually drops to about 15 instead of 50. So I assume the fridge sucks down about 35 watts when it needs to run the compressor and then almost none when it's not running the compressor. So that's the Blue Eddy AC200P. These are the practical uses of the device and uh, just a general idea of how much wattage they're taking. When you're using less than 100 wattage, it really goes down slowly. But as you use, you know, say 500 watts or 600 watts for a home entertainment system, maybe it'll last uh, several hours of the day. Or if you're trying to unload the whole thing, uh, well, if you're, unload the whole thing in your car it's going to go in an hour um, but it'll put you know four miles five miles on your car uh, if you have an electric car and then the uh the intermediate wattages of the toaster the waffle maker the coffee maker you know these all pull about a thousand watts each and uh this device um you know the microwave as well uh, if you get a 600 watt microwave it'll run for it'll run at about a, a thousand watts uh, it could run for an hour uh, and I don't know what you'd want to put in the microwave for an hour because that's a pretty long time. So uh, the Blue Eddy AC200P, um, just managing regular loads and acting very normal and uh, looking like it could supply the needs of uh, a kitchen all day. And uh, with the solar capabilities, you should be able to recharge this entire device three times a day in full sunlight if you have enough solar panels. So that's uh, three times as much as this would normally hold if you can keep it uh, exposed to the sun with uh, a good set of solar panels. Thanks for watching. Take care.